Hello, my dear friends. Today is a day to celebrate because uh, yesterday evening uh, Tesla uh, released its uh, uh, delivery numbers and, and sales numbers uh, for the second quarter of 2019. And um, to many people's surprise, it's a new record uh, that they set of about 94,000 or 95,000 uh, deliveries. And um, uh, I mean, uh, amount of vehicles. Huh? And uh, that's very impressive because the previous uh, quarter, for example, uh, the first quarter of 2019 was, um, tw was, was 60,000 vehicles or so. But what's most important is that you shouldn't be comparing quarter to quarter. Um, you should compare to the last year's quarter because uh, uh, car sales are very... Um, um, uh, are much higher at the end of the year for all brands uh, in the third quarter and the fourth quarter than in the beginning of the year. So, so you have to really compare if you want to look at what's the growth rate of Tesla. You have to look at the second quarter of 2018, uh, and they did about 40,000 vehicles. Then, that means they more than doubled uh, their uh, sales. Uh, that's very, very, very impressive. Uh, I mean. Um, but they've been doing this, of course, for, for many, many years, uh, that they are uh, growing at a, a rate um, somewhere between 60% per year um, and 100% per year, depending on what metrics you, you're looking at. And um, yeah, that's extremely impressive. Um, uh, basically, Tesla is absolutely wiping the floor with the competition. If you look at the sales numbers of, for example, the latest new model, the Model 3, it's outselling all other electrical vehicles, but even all other uh, ICE vehicles, uh, uh, internal combustion engine vehicles in that uh, in that class segment. For uh, it's just outselling them, uh, selling more than BMWs or or, or Fords or like. <clears throat> It's 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 absolutely impressive and 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 of course for me uh, it's a great because um, invest a lot in Tesla and I also used leverage so my liquidation price uh, at the price at which it would start to um, liquidate my position was one hundred ninety dollars per share um, so at a leverage of about two point three or so. Um, so about double or uh, a little bit more than double the amount of shares than the amount of cash that I invested. Uh, and, and so I used the margin loan for that. But uh, of course, it's not a good thing when you get liquidated um, because um, you never can buy back the same amount of shares. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the challenge if you use leverage is um, uh, it's the same. Uh, 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 as um, it's, it's very similar to using no leverage. You want to buy at the bottom uh, the maximum amount, uh, like you want to buy at the bottom your total uh, position. Uh, ideally for Tesla, that would be you buy everything at $177. That was the bottom. Of course, that's not, totally not realistic. So uh, you, you try to buy the bottom by buying uh, uh, more and more as prices go lower. Um, uh, but but if you use 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 leverage, then it also means like okay you're trying to buy the bottom. And for example, you succeeded at having an average buy-in price of hundred ninety. For example, well actually in my case it was not it was two hundred and ten eh? because I bought the bottom, but I also bought the higher. I started buying at two hundred dollars. I bought also at hundred ninety or at hundred eighty. Uh, then I went back up, I bought uh, again at 200, uh, 210, uh, at 200, and even at 220, and at 230 I bought. So my average price was 210. And um, then the, after I bought at 230 a lot, it went down to 220, and it ranged there for a couple of weeks. Now it's up to $240, so that's really great, um, thanks to the... yeah fantastic results of, of the quarter two that just came out. The, the stock price jumped from 220 to 240. But that also means like for me, I had uh, 
an average buying price of $210, but I also used leverage of about 2.3 or so, and, and, and that means that um, uh, I had a liquidation price of around $190. And so if it would dip below $190, then, um, and let's say we, we find a new low of, of, for example, $150, yeah, that would be, of course, bad for me. Uh, because um, if you look at the previous video I made on, on, on how to use leverage, um, yeah, I would be liquidated and I would um, lose, I don't know, I, I would have to look it up, but maybe I would lose like 30% of my shares or something. And if it would go back up and, and I buy back those shares, I would not succeed in buying back the same amount of shares. So so there's a risk here. Eh? But I think it's a risk we're taking, as I, I explained in the other video, because even if that happened, I would still end up with more shares than if I don't use leverage. So, uh, but this has, 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 has worked out for me very well because the price is up now to 240. And so I'm, I'm further away from the liquidation price. That means that, yeah, my risk has gone down a lot. Uh, that I took with the leverage, but at the same time, I still have the shares that I bought with the leverage. So I'm very, very happy with that. And, um, and um, yeah, uh, yeah, just that's all I have to say about it. Maybe, maybe um, some, some uh, recommendations uh, for those that have not invested in Tesla yet. I do think $240 is, is still a great price. Uh, and, and certainly, uh, if, if you don't have any exposure to it, uh, definitely worth investing in. I think, uh, yeah, the price can recover as quickly uh, to previous prices uh, as it has fallen. If you look at the chart of Tesla, it was around $300 at the beginning of 2019, something like that. Uh, well, it will be back at $300 at the end of 2019. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, that's very likely. Uh, so you buy at $240, $250, you're still going to sit on a nice gain, very likely, uh, in a short amount of time. So so, so definitely still worth uh, buying. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also, what I uh, also talked about, uh, the very interesting thing, if you really start to use margin loans is that because the value of uh, my stock went up I also can now borrow more um, against this stock I could buy more shares of Tesla at current prices or I could invest in something else huh? uh, and that's also really great and something that I'm now thinking about huh? of course if I do that then my liquidation price also goes up it's now at 190 but if i take out more margin loan it will go up to 200 or 210 depending on how much i take and so i increase my risk again that it will correct below that price and then i will get liquidated so i have to think about these things but yeah great uh great uh problems to have uh, the biggest question for me is 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 until what time should I buy more Tesla shares and increase my margin loan or not? Um, that's that's and I haven't figured out the answer. Um, yeah, mm, if if you are familiar with my investment style in crypto, I think that once you reach serious undervaluation, you should really buy strong to majority exposure. Um, and and when should you buy uh, stop buying? Um, well, once you go above again, serious undervaluation, uh, it depends where you are in the market cycle. Huh? But um, uh, and, and so, but what does that mean with with uh, when when do you want to sell? Well, not not until you reach serious overvaluation. Huh? Uh, so when you don't use leverage, it's a simple story of yes, you want to keep your cash free. You only start buying when you reach serious undervaluation. And then you never sell those shares or coins in a rich, until you reach a serious overvaluation. That's my strategy in crypto. Um, and, it, and it's a strategy, of course, based on without leverage. And, and it's simple. Um, and with, it, with Tesla, it's the same story. Any other asset, uh, when it reaches serious undervaluation and you don't use leverage, yes, you buy, you buy strong. Uh, and then you don't sell that until it reaches serious overvaluation. Mm. But when you use leverage, 
it's a, it's a, it's 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 a, it's a different instrument because you buy it and you and what happens is that if you max out your, your leverage um, and the price goes up, let's say you're successful and you buy a series under valuation and you also leverage up two weeks, for example. Um, while the moment it goes up, you actually are suddenly able to invest more. That's never the case if you don't invest with leverage, then just the value of your stocks or coins go up, but you can't invest more. Uh, but when you use leverage, you can. And should you? Well, I think as long as you're in serious undervaluation, you should. Mm -hmm. Of course, also based on how much exposure you want to have in your portfolio. But yes, because it's still in serious undervaluation. Um, and so the, the uh, 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 but you should also stop when you don't have serious undervaluation anymore because uh, risk goes up. Uh, like there is no like yes. Like the odds are the highest that when you reach series under valuation, you will go, come back out of it quite quickly and price will go up. But that's not like a certainty. It could also range in series under valuation for a while uh, sideways and go up, down, up, down. And you have leverage then. You get kicked out of your position. You have to buy it back. You kicked out again. You're just piling up small losses uh, that eat away um, your investments and your uh, capital. So... There is a risk there. Also, nothing is to say that it won't reach much lower uh, valuations. Also, uh, even though it is has already hit serious undervaluation, there is a small chance it will go lower. And then you're like, yeah, piling up big losses. So um, uh, there is a risk uh, with losing leverage that you don't have when you just use your own capital. Because yes, you buy serious undervaluation and then it drops through the floor again. Good by two, it's not a big problem. Yes. You, you just lost half your investment, but you, if you just keep the coins or the stocks, it will go back up sooner or later if the fundamentals are good and you will make back that loss. But that's not the case when you use leverage. Huh? The losses you make there, you can't make back. Um, unless you keep on buying up uh, as the price goes up, but then you're like you will never like now i'm for example get liquidated at 190 let's say it goes to to, to 150 I, I i'm get kicked out of lots of stocks if i want to buy all those stocks back i will have to buy up at a higher price than we are today and so and so my liquidation price will have to go up from 190 to i don't know 250 or so to to be and so i have to keep on basically take on more risk later uh and, and so that's not a good deal so that's why I think it's a wise strategy to not increase to only increase leverage as long as you're in serious undervaluation. Then I think there is still risk and that won't go will go wrong. But you're in serious undervaluation, so it's worth taking that risk. But once you climb out of that, I don't think it's worth taking the risk. So then the question is where like is 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 tesla how like what price should tesla reach to be out of serious undervaluation and and i did a little bit of thinking on that but you can apply the similar kind of chart that i use in crypto uh the the logarithmic regression chart hmm? if you would use it for uh, tesla uh, and just uh yeah average out all past prices to see uh, the growth rate then you would see that, um, yeah, I mean, roughly estimated that in the beginning uh, it was trading at around ten twenty dollars since twenty eleven or so. It was trading um, for a couple of years uh, around twenty dollars, and then it shot to two hundred dollars, uh, and a year later it was uh, around three hundred dollars, and a year later at four hundred dollars. So basically, it shot to about three hundred dollars, you could say. So it was about twenty dollars for. Five years and it was what three hundred dollars for another five years after that. Um, uh, so where do you have like if you draw that uh, that uh, uh, that logarithmic regression line, uh, you will see in the beginning it was um, fairly valued at the start, then it was undervalued uh, as price went sideways for uh, five years at twenty dollars, more and more and more it was undervalued, and then it shot to basically three hundred dollars for five years. And so at the beginning it was seriously overvalued, but as it went sideways more and more and more, uh, it was um, it was um, more and more um, 
um, less and less overvalued. But did it go to undervaluation based on this price history? Um, I'm not sure about that uh, because, well, there has not been a, a new big pump pulling up that logarithmic regression line. So, um, uh, but but why did I think and do I think it's still undervalued? Because just compared to other numbers, not uh, not the history of uh, the Tesla uh, uh, prices, the shares, but the history of um, of the growth rate of uh, turnover and gross profits. Uh, th that has been climbing a lot. In summary, I, I think that that it's very likely we will see a 10x for Tesla and it will go to $2,000 in only a year or yeah, very similar to what happened five years ago when we went from $20 to $300. Something similar will happen again, I think, over the next one, two years. Um, and, and so then suddenly we will go to yeah, serious overvaluation. But yeah, it, it's then also that you will realize that yeah, it shoots from basically uh, $200 to uh, $1,500 or so. Uh, looking back on it then, what, what was serious undervaluation? Well, as long as it's trading in the $300 range, uh, where we've been for five years now, actually that's serious undervaluation. Huh? Um, and then fair valuation is probably somewhere in the middle, uh, probably around $600, 700 $800. And then, yeah, uh, overvaluation is double that. Hmm? Um, uh, that that will be probably uh, in, in in two years' time uh, what we will see. Hmm? So I, I think that yeah, around three hundred dollars is still uh, up until three hundred dollars still because that's about the average price of the past five years. Three hundred dollars. Um, that is the that is that is where you can say that's still seriously undervalued. But once we shoot out of that range, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, uh, you can't say that anymore. And, uh, and therefore, you should not increase uh, leverage or, um, yeah, the opportunity to buy something cheap has, 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 has passed. Those are my uh, opinions on that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.